All right, so today we're going to talk about nonlinear problems. So everything in the class so far has just been linear, uh, and it makes the solution really nice. So for nonlinear problems, the development of the finite element formulation is exactly the same. In other words, we're going to follow our three-step procedure or whatever. You know, we're going to have a strong form equation, multiply by a test function, and integrate over the body, use integration by parts to shift some of the differentiation onto the test function, and then plug in our interpolants for the field variables and the test function. And then we'll have our finite element model. So nothing will change there. It's only different in the solution techniques, and we'll see why. And so I'm going to start and with a generic or kind of a simple model problem, develop the, or show what the finite element model is. Um, but the real reason we're interested in this is because we want to do plasticity. Right? And so at the, near the end, I'll, I'll sort of begin to talk about how this applies to the plasticity model. And so our sort of model problem at the beginning is going to be uh, a large deflection Euler Bernoulli beam. And so the equation, the strong form equation for that guy. So here we have a beam that has some axial motion u and transverse motion w. Uh, QO would be a distributed load. in the transverse direction, and F is an axial load. And so if you notice, if dW dx and times du dx, so that's, that's this term, for small deflections, that's approximately 0 as is the squared term for small transverse deflections, w. And in that case, these two equations decouple, and they become, the first one becomes the 1D bar equation that we examined thoroughly, and the second one becomes the Euler-Bernoulli beam equation, which we didn't really examine in class, but you derive its weak form as part of a homework assignment. You might have not known that you did that because I never said what the physics behind the equation were, but I asked you to develop for that fourth order PDE, right? Well, that's the second equation under these assumptions where they're decoupled. But if they're coupled, then you have a nonlinear problem. So the weak form over an element with endpoints xA and xB Sorry, that was a lot, but that's the whole weak form. Then we would plug in some interpolation. So we're going to assume that u is uj nj, w is wj, I'll use mj, 
So m is the interpolation function for w, and that would typically be different for a beam. You'd use something called a Hermite interpolation, which we haven't talked about in this class, but we're not actually going to solve this problem. It's just a model problem, so it doesn't really matter what those interpolation functions are. And again, just so you were clear, over this element, we have two axial degrees of freedom, two transverse degrees of freedom, and two rotations, because it's a beam. It's a beam. And the loads, as I use in the, are this. And so the solution to this thing is going to be the solution to this. where it's understood that W, U, U has two components and W has four, right? The, dis, the transverse displacement and the rotations. Right? This, these are vectors. And so, Thank you. 